Winter Clash was a roaring success and the skaters went full bore. Plenty of grinds, spins and people going upside down in lots of different ways. Stair rides, jump rope and people turning themselves into fetishies. It witnessed one of the greatest comebacks in rollerblading that has people calling Joe Atkinson. Listen again! There's been edits from Standard, Mesmer, Nils and Kudo. We got to see the Echo skates, potentially new stuff from them skates. Someone tried smuggling drugs in rollerblades and Julian Kudo fell off a mega ramp. And I found in the hole and everybody goes over me. I almost f***ed up the world show. Let's get into the thing. All the stunts are performed by professionals. Do not attempt this yourself. I said Winter Clash, are you ready? And, oh my God. He wasn't. He actually got hit so hard that if he got, he could actually speak English. I don't speak English. You don't speak English? Okay, so favorite skater in the final. Brilliant. Marco says he can't speak English and Matt and Mickey just continues. So uh, favorite skater in the finals, mate? <laughs> but it's Nils. So. Nils. Why Nils? Because it's in my team, only for this. Live stream gold, and there was loads more bits like that, which we'll uh, get into later. When I first seen the Winter Clash course start appearing in people's stories, a few things ran through my mind. First was, wow, St. John's Ambulance are gonna be putting a shift in over the weekend. People are gonna be getting broken off. <laughs> One of the many great things about Winter Clash is that like, anybody can get involved, and a lot of people do. It is, however, very tempting to start thinking, I'm going to make a name for myself here, like, whole industry's watching, pretty sure Matthias just like winked at me, the crowd is warring, you're thinking, I'm going to do something mad like that I've never done before, I wouldn't even consider doing it in like soft play. One in a million chance of landing it. That's impossible! And people get turned to feta cheese. The course looked like it was encouraging that, like whispering to people, come on, mate, like, like, do this do mad this trick, mad, like, like, you're gonna go and throw it, you do this. Jump this jump gap and you do will be your main. I thought it was gonna be amateurs treating themselves like crash test dummies. <gasps> I think it was the pros that took the lion's share of like the bad bales. I don't enjoy watching bales, so I'm not going to show it, but Avi's bale was absolutely brute. Fold like a lawn chair. If I could describe it, compare it to something else, it was like when Bane broke Batman's back in The Dark Knight Rises. That's exactly it. You merely adopted Winter Clash. I was born in it. <laughs> And the second thing I thought was that loco skate box was made for Joe Atkinson, which was pretty accurate, which uh, we'll get into later. The juniors were straight in, setting the time for a very exciting day. The junior females got stuck right in, and it's not an easy course to skate at all. Like everything, it's much gnarlier in real life. Something bigger in person. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what it looks like times two, that's how big it is. Great. You might have been sitting at home giving it the big ink, being like, I can do that, but you get there, see the size of all the obstacles, like stick a few like hundred or like a few thousand people in front of you, like watching you, all of a sudden you can't even drop in properly. Eva took third, Katagina came second, and Amelie taking the win after a solid performance. One of the junior men's heats started with a 540 alley-oop sole from Philippe Hudizak and a fakey 900 cork from Haruhi. That is mental. I know like we need more kids in rollerblading, but the ones we do have are pretty good like there's like children back flipping over my head and shit <laughs> it's like wow i suck <laughs> <laughs> michael peter's act was smashing it round the course and his ender was a mizu to front flip 180 that is a stunt and that secured him third are you not entertained are you not entertained yun show how was gliding around the place everything he did looked smooth and controlled he only top sold the Roche's box, which is one of the best tricks I'd seen on that, and that was to take second. But it was Haruhi who trains at the Takeshi Yasutoku gym of absolutely crisp skating who took the gold. He is another level above. He's got all the crowd pleasers in there, but with style and outrageous form. His final trick was a hurricane top sole, which was a beauty. And he's no stranger to winning comps either. You should see the kid on vert. 13 years old, goat in the making. If rollerblading got more attention, he'd be a superstar. I actually chatted about him in uh, Future Stars of Rollerblading. I actually chatted about loads of the people that uh, did really well in Winter Clash in Future Stars of Rollerblading. So it's really good to see them like go from like 
being like kind of standout young skaters to actually now like performing on a really big stage for rollerblading. The Am Women was a massive highlight and it absolutely kicked off. Brazil came out in force. Laura Santos was one of the Brazilian squad that came over and set about destroying the park. Fish brains on the big box, switches on it, hitting the big rail, and looking very at ease on like all the obstacles, even hyping up the crowd like a great ambassador for rollerblading. And she took third. Kate Bedratter was hitting backflips, the firecracker rail, throwing fakey top asses, and hitting the big rail to take second. Good bit of female representation there for Roches. I spotted that Shima was front and center, like loving every second of it. It's great that he still gets a buzz off it. I think it's really important for like icons and people of his like his like grand status to be seen at these kind of events. Like it's motivational for people. Anna Julia De Silva started their heat off with a 900 on the big like grindhouse snowplow box, then continued to rinse the park, putting lines together, 360s to grinds, flat fives true spin this, true spin that. And it wasn't just the level of the tricks she was doing, it was the consistency and how she looked totally comfortable floating around the park, picking these tricks out. Her finishing move was a cork 720 up the grindhouse box. That heat and her skating specifically was one of the standout performances of the day. The mood was already like pretty bubbling, but like, that took it to turbo, man. The comment section on the live stream was like flooded with Brazilian flags and like her name. And a lot of people saying later that she probably could have held her own in the pro division. There seems to be a really strong community and competition scene in Brazil, especially the likes of like Della Street, which is dedicated to women's skating. Like the results speak for themselves. And I know it's very easy for me to say this because I don't have to deal with the logistics, but it would be amazing to see their sponsors fly them out to more competitions outside of Brazil and like South America because like their presence and the performance they put on is like it's unbelievable it's so motivational if you're into the vid and you like to see me continue to do this there's a few ways you can support me like giving a like and throwing a comment in there is amazing there's also patreon and the channel membership exclusive video sneak peeks that kind of thing I've got merch you can buy which is also up on the muzzle website and uh it all really does genuinely help to uh, keep this thing going, so cheers. The Am Men had about 160 competitors, which is really healthy. And the final heats was like another step up. Roche's secret weapon, Francesco Fama, had a good run out. And I thought he might pinch a top three spot actually, but just got pipped by Gills, who was actually one of the volunteers at Winter Crash, which kind of feels like a Disney story or something. He's there putting the ramps together, like sweeping up pre-waxing it like shining people's skates for them just dreaming about his one shot then lose yourself by eminem comes on and he goes mad for it his final banger after a little battle was a 270 back back to sweaty which he laced he's also the person that marco stepped right in front of like thought he was ringo star on abbey road realized he left the oven on so just started like walking off clatted oh my god Normally when people do flips at a grind, I think it's just heinous. Like it's probably wet in it. Wet packet hands slapped in your face like, there you go. But I will eat my hat. And after Julian Coudot gave him a few like words of advice, like get those middle wheels out and just think of France, mate. Lenny Jordan's soul to backflip was landed so nice. If everybody did it like that, I'd be a convert. It was brilliant. One of my favorites from last year and again this year was Naburu Katayama unbelievable style. As I was watching it live, I predicted what was gonna happen. Nuburu is gonna full, fakey free to like alley top sole, something, <laughs> something full top side. And he did it, unmatched style and finesse. He just does cool tricks with incredible technique, better than anyone. I thought he was gonna be a shoe in for the win. It was Leonardo Cardoso who took the gold, starting his line off with a 900, then a fakey misty and an abstract five off the grindhouse snowplow. He was then throwing lofty freeze to souls. And although he missed his final finisher trick, I think probably the volume of naughty stuff he did like earned him first. Before we get into the pros, one of the many great things about Winter Clash is uh, it's not just about the competition. Jumbo put out a great video capturing the essence of it all. That's the Amcom. 
Welcome to the Pro Cup. Some really cool skating goes down outside the comp as well. There was this session on a staircase with like Dom, Gabriel Hayden, Levy, Umberto. There was a foam pit session that looked like it went off. Joe Atkinson was doing unreal stuff on the resi ramps. Sizemore dropped a 540 kind grind underneath the Roche's box. Julio was having a session on the mini ramps. Everywhere you look, there's like young kids skating, like meeting more kids their age, eh? just like making new friends. There's breakout dance comps at the end. There's people doing jump rope. There's George Wilson kicking himself in the head. You had the cosplay guys dressed as Julian Kudo with the baggots, the cigs and the wrist protectors. For three days or more, all those internet friends become like your real life friends. And you think, actually, this is really good life. I can just put a little bit more money into this community, like support the things that I really like, support stuff like this. We can keep doing this and it's mint. The fits were going off. Brian Shima had one of my favorites when he came like all decked out in black with the black Montclair gilet, looking like he's about to touch road. Man driving a German whip, whip. look like a ball of peas and that. Dan Robinson came as someone's recently divorced auntie. Bobby and Martina came as Veruca Salt and Violet Beauregard. Rose beef and a baked potato. Mm. This guy came as Mick Hucknall. The women's pro event kicked off the final part of festivities, and every single one of them got stuck into it and brought something different. It was pretty hard to say like who was winning. Everyone had their like standout moments. Someone would have a good line, and you think, oh, they're edging it and then another person would like land something mad. I kind of think Chihiri would have landed her finishing move trick if people used their common sense and got back a little bit. Like Captain Birdseye standing there filming like he's trying to get a read on people's thread count. People sitting on a bench like they're at a tea party or watching a game of croquet. Xavi wrapped up third with an acid to top acid, first go, job and knock. Misaki Hiwu is the most stylish female skater of the day and killing it the whole time. Got a fakey free kind grind on her fourth go, ending up with second. And Mary, who was bringing a little bit more amplitude all day, actually got injured on the first go of her last trick. But like a trooper, got back up to do a soul to soul. And the only reason her foot popped out was because she basically couldn't put any weight on her foot, but still did it anyway. Minus the injury, a great start to the year, new skates, the promo in this win. I really wish though she would have given it one of these, like the shh to all the people questioning her status. That would have been a touch. And that's Demetrius Skate. Shut up, mate. What's he won recently? Shh, pro, mate. <laughs> a lot of people saying Anna Julia would have fared well in the pro division. And I like, I totally agree with that. It'd be good to see her in that division next year. The men's finals boiled down to three heats of absolute madness. The other day I was speaking about people abseiling into event. Well, David Sizemore, after scaling Kaleo, actually dropped in from the ceiling. Danilo started with a 1260, and everyone came out charging. It was like trying to keep an eye on like 20 different people, all on different waltzes at the same time. It was comparable to just letting a ruck of chickens run wild on a course. Danning was throwing big sevens. Oigan was getting tech on the grind to wall to grinds. I really liked Sizemore's zero air transfer, then doing the fronty to 450 out. Danilo continued to skate like a a Beyblade on the FR box, the USD box of them box spinning all over the place. And he finished things off with the Roberto Carlos 540 TTP on the USD box. Or you can sign things off with the front five wall ride to fish. Sizemore did a massive wall ride straight onto somebody's Jed. No idea what that guy was thinking. Finish him. They might want to start considering sticking people in helmets if they're going to stand that close to the action like getting fully like suited up like a knight chain mail and all that kind of stuff. It would look unreal in the footage like people darting around there's just a line of knights just standing there watching it go down. If somebody in the crowd's being a bit of an idiot, get them in the stocks, throw a load of sweaty intuition liners at them. The second heat saw a Bray and Bobby straight in there with the flips and spins. Yaro topsoil 540 into the quarter pipe was spot on. A break disaster sound, full pout towards the cage wall, trying to turn himself into grated cheese or going for that like flame grill effect on his body. Levy was up on the stadium support rails and the enders were absolutely bonkers again. Bobby with the big 540 off the snowplow and he must have rhino strength legs because that was turning everybody else to jelly. Levy with the sole up the rail to fish sort of backslide bonk tap thing. 180 drop that was absolutely wild and I think it was a little bit like underrated. Now I'm assuming the riders in the final heat weren't picked like randomly because 
they were just like Premier League. It was on another level, and the winner was like definitely coming from this heat. No disrespect to the others, like everybody else who got to the finals was unbelievable, but they were all flying economy while these lot were on like a G6 or something. Again, another start with pure chaos. Joe Atkinson with one of the biggest airs of the day and the 540 stall, Don with a 900, Julian 720 cork, Nils top acid to back Roy, which was turning other people to feta. Dom continued speeding around, plucking off tricks. The heel roll to top Sunny was a great use of the loco box. Kudai was having an absolute cracker, spinning to all sorts. The zero alley -oop top sole, 360 in was so nice. Nils kept everything stylish or still dry dropping like stuntery and crowd pleasers. As is tradition at Winter Class, everybody mobbed the course for the final tricks. And that's another great thing about it, being able to get really like, almost completely stuck into the action. Like the skaters going past you, like sweat slapping you in the face, barely able to breathe because of the BO levels. Skaters can't see where they're skating or where they're gonna land. Don went for the 540 alley-oop sole on the loco rail. Nils grabbed a fresh cabbage straight out of the ground. Munch on that, squeeze some carrot juice straight into his eyes. Bit of earth down his liner, get that organic feel. He'd already done top sole to top sole, but extended it this time by going a little bit further and getting into the quarter pipe and doing it so smooth as well. Kudo after hitting the perspex twice got the disaster. Alley-oop top acid, the most leaned out he possibly could have been. He used a full-on drop kick technique right at the apex of his jump. It was pretty mad just watching him wax it and even consider that trick. Completely berserk. Now earlier in the heat, Joe Atkinson, in his own words, completely bagpiped himself. A severe case of accordion lung and he got carted off to the medical bay and everybody thought like that's him, he's done. But the whispers started and the rumours began to spread. As Joe was lying there and the medical team were replacing his lung with a VHS of puberty the method, the previous winners of the winter clash visited him via spirit putting a little bit of tear into a bottle, combining that with like helmet sweat, bearing lube, a lost sock from the trade show, some chips and curry sauce and a, the Beano album from 1994, and Joe rose back to life like The Undertaker. You could clearly see Joe was still in a fair bit of discomfort. Then the DJ came in clutch dropping sandstorm. The crowd were absolutely fizzing and he went full hog at the loco box. Backside up to thing to wall stool to Roy back in. Then it was pure pandemonium after that. Best comeback in a competition ever. And that actually won him like best trick for the sixth time. That's unreal. Delino took third, Kudo took second, and Nils took the win. Bar the utterly mad skating. Winter Clash is really great because everybody feels involved in it. Everyone plays a part. Huge shout out to Jojo and a host of other people making it happen. It's a small industry, there's not a lot of money, so it's a big ask, but they do it so well. It's like the pinnacle of what can be achieved given the current situation. And you realize how passionate and like motivated people are to do stuff with rollerblading. How many people leave that thing feeling like positive and motivated and just generally really pumped on rollerblading? This was the craziest shit. It's pretty fucking cool. The interviews from the event are now out and Jump Street did a great one with Julian Kudo and he's come across really well. He's clearly a very dedicated and motivated man. Really cool to hear about his plans and all the great stories. The Nitro Circus one is utterly wild. I almost fucked up the world show. Finally collapse and I do a split. Oh, my my no. balls always almost touch, oh. touch it and then I go front flip and I fall in the hole and everybody goes over me. For all the mad stuff he does though, it sounds like he's got his head screwed on and got a good plan. And I really liked his answer about sponsors as well. I have some friend who works with razors and stuff like that. So I'm talking with them sometimes and they say, yeah, we would like to have you on the team, but we cannot pay for now or stuff like this. So, so yeah, then I'm, we, I don't pay interest to that anymore. I'm like, okay, I understand, but that, that's, that's, not, that's not good for me. So the choice is to, that I just don't want to make what I do now on my skates for a brand without getting paid like a, a decent amount. Mac Mickey also grabbed in quickly after the finals to have a quick chat. What would it mean to you to have a fourth victory? 
It would mean a lot, but it would mean that I still have a lot of work because I, I want to win way more. I love that man, so sick to have such a strong competitive spirit, but seemingly just buzzing to be there as well like. I also really respect you don't see Kudo complaining about the results, like there's definitely been a few times where you think Kudo should have really won that competition or this competition, but he just gets on with it, goes out there, gives it his all, has a great time, results come in, doesn't win, he's like, yeah, whatever, I'll be back to win some more. Unlike certain other skaters who love a bit of complaining. Julian has actually already won his next comp, the Leon Open 2024, putting on a very acrobatic display, netting himself a thousand euros and a dog. Before the Winter Clash Blues even set in, Nils dropped an edit and he must already be eyeing up Sotty. Wins Winter Clash and is like, get an eye full of this man, I am class. He's very well known for his clean cut professional approach to skating, but he's still got that rowdiness in him. There's a video of him when he was a really young kid, like he's like 12 or something, it's on head and skate and he's doing a trick tip and it's a disaster and he's just like, yeah mate, you've just got to send it like. A great combination of very purposeful movements, style, control, technicality and big stunts. I was going to try and pick a favourite trick but everything in there feels like a standout moment. I've done a full breakdown on my Patreon, go and check that out. Somatics must be absolutely loving it, already seeing a return on their investment with their like two new riders placing first and second while they also had their wheels on display. Nils has a purple swirl numbers with the magic boots written on them, kind of look like a bruiser bar colourway. Under the right conditions a bruiser bar would like fuse your teeth together and Kudo's got the black swirly ones with a zombie looking bloke on it. Kudo also dropped his intro edit with Amp Medina and the first line is absolutely pissed. The 270 back Sav Reaver Neg Mistral surprised me and it shows how tech Julian can get. Without doubt, he can get mad on rails, but I really like seeing him skate spots that aren't rails. For me, that's when I find his skating most interesting. I also bet he could do something totally messed up on an awkward spot. Co-founder of Samax, Fritz Pietzner, also wanted a slice of the action, putting out an edit himself, and it's really good, man. So someone thought it'd be a smart idea to smuggle coke in rollerblade wheels. Unfortunately for them, the skates were discovered in a package by Homeland Security, traveling between Columbia and Kenosha, Wisconsin. They searched the property where the skates were headed and also found a kilo more of drugs and a rock of fake IDs. How did they even work out that drugs were in the skates? Sometimes I uh, use uh, my house for parties. And the best idea is to get at 2 a.m. and use it. After a couple of years, yeah, a few joints. In the build up to Winter Clash, there was a fair bit of excitement and intrigue around Echo, a new skate brand, and we got to see the skate. The first comments I seen were mostly about the shell designs, specifically that bit that kind of looked like smudged clay or like somebody had picked it up before it had set properly. It's been compared to the 909, and I believe that's exactly why they've added little bits like that. They've gone down the clean and simple hard boot design route, but to separate themselves, they've thrown in like a bit of a smudge in those little notches near the toe and also on the frame. I think some of the shiny samples they had there exaggerated the smudge. The final texture is actually going to be matte, which is like noticeably different, makes a feature less defined and makes the skate look a lot better. Their promo edit was on the live stream and that was a cool little snapshot. Tobias Nielsen and Jason Moller were the skaters and I've been involved in the development process. So where do people think they sit in the market? Like they offer a relatively cheap hard boot skate, but you can get the Sway and the M12 for cheaper. And now you've got the Playlife Reactor, which is 75 pound less. Beyond a slightly different aesthetic, there's no massive like innovation there on a surface level. So they're just coming into a small market as another competitor, like a budget version of a 909 or a standard. But all the previous brands mentioned have teams they support. So it's going to be very important to see what Echo do beyond just the skate. I had a little chat with them and they said like the plan is to try and develop a team. They've been working with the guys in Denmark. They also want to bridge out to people in the UK. They want to get involved in like groups in skate schools, they want to sponsor like juniors, they want to move into the female market as well and they want to be like present at events and they did actually sponsor the live stream so like kind of all good steps, all very sound intentions and we'll just have to see what happens. Talk on a standard, they dropped This Is Now, their first team video and a formal introduction to their riders. 
Yandy, Stefan and Brian. I think it's a solid first outing. Plenty of varied spots in there which I really enjoyed. Brian Weiss stood out to me. There's an extra level of creativity and refinement to his skating that sets him apart. I did also really like this jump to air event from Stefan. I thought that was the actual trick but that was just him getting to the spot. The majority of you thought it was decent followed by a banger. Mesmer and their crew of bandits put out NYC Volume 2 with a soundtrack straight from Jilly's Rock World. Really sick they're continuing continuing to make these crew edits happen and get their internationally spread team together because they're really good at it. The Lewis Corrales bank wall set slide up to Seoul on that super high ledge was fucking premiere and such a cool moment in a video full of great moments. You know that initial hype when Mesmer was announced? Well, they're living up to it. It seems like they're getting stronger and actually fulfilling their intentions. Dom is always exciting and unpredictable. He does a stair bash upstairs, which was mad. Mark Marino seems very at home skating in New York and is really crafty. He is just so well versed in navigating city terrain. Billy the Boss Man was still giving it and that TTP was such a lovely touch. Levy Van Rain was absolutely brilliant. He always has an entertaining mix of buck wild and creativity. Bellino keeps pushing himself more and more into the best like street skater ever. No matter what he's skating he can take it to another level of execution that is like undeniably great while still feeling raw and exciting. The extended Mesmer family including the great Mick Casals are heavily involved in this one as well and it's all edited seamlessly like you're not waiting there for your favorite skater to appear everybody brings something and it goes so well Sloan Bokas is an incredible skater and continues to be an incredible skater into his like early 40s and I'm sure he will continue to be great. Him and his mates were started at the Grand Prix which happened the other weekend. They had a jam, a few games of skate, then premiered Davar videos. They invited crews to the World Skate Center for private sessions with the aim of making a two minute edit which had to involve a tire with the likes of Borkland Zoo, Plastic Pushers, Burza Torden all getting involved. It looks like a great event. Head over to Sven channel to catch all of our videos. Them and them riders have been dropping some ridiculous reels lately. First GQ has a captivating level of control over his skates, his form and movements. Brosco who continues to be the GOAT, he did this lovely like drop back salve which is so good and a zero soil which is absolutely beautiful. Then you had Pat Ridder pouring new life into mini ramp skating and another example of how style and conviction make skating look class but also fun. John's recently been visiting the factories. You can clearly see like an 80 mil wheel being tested. Some other wheel sizes maybe being poured. He's got a picture of the skates there. Is this a new colorway with some updates on the way? Because they seem to be fairly regularly making improvements to the 909. What do you reckon? If Winter Clash has got you itching to go to more events, there's some uh, things coming up later in the year. Copenhagen B-Roll 2024 will be on the 16th, 17th and 18th of August in Copenhagen, obviously. It looked amazing last year. Straight after that, you've got the Capital Rollers Jam in London. And prior to all of that, you've got the Stockport Jam, but this time in Rampworks Liverpool. Nice one. Huge thank you to all my patrons and channel members. I honestly couldn't do this without you. Like, your support is absolutely vital to the channel. So, big thank you to you lot. A couple of other videos you can watch in the meantime until I'm back. See you again soon. Spotty Dog.